Hello and welcome to a new video where I am going to take a look at this road network that I created in a previous video and take it to the next step. We have these paths that connect generated points on a surface and now I want to make these paths a little bit more organic looking. And for that I want to introduce a algorithm that I created that can do exactly this. And now these paths are all very very cool looking and very organic and absolutely not where they should be. And now these paths are absolutely organic looking and they adapt very very good to the terrain. So let's first check out how this algorithm works. Let's start with two points on a height map and connect them with an edge. The first step of my algorithm is subdivision. So if the length of an edge is greater than some defined value, I subdivide it by inserting a point in the center. The second step is finding better positions for every point with two neighbors, so in this case only for the center point. To do so I generate a bunch of candidate points. I use the two neighbor points to calculate a normal vector and scale it down by some defined amount. That is where the first candidate point will be. To generate the rest I apply this normal multiple times and also mirror the points. The original point is of course always an option too. Then I calculate a cost function for each point and settle on the lowest cost. Now this can be repeated a fixed amount of iterations or until the algorithm settles on a path. I implemented the algorithm as a blueprint function library, so I can call it anywhere inside of blueprint. Um, and it is this path refinement function which is exposed to blueprint. In blueprint it looks like this. We have a spline component as in and output. The refinement settings are all the customization options for the algorithm. And uh, I haven't experimented with the cost function much, uh, but I found out that you need to add the height in some nonlinear way. Currently I multiply the flat distance of two points with a slope angle and also that slope angle is powered with an exponent. But feel free to experiment with the cost function and let me know if you found a better one. Then the world params define the landscape. And they are only used to calculate the z value for a 2D vector. So if you have another approach to calculate the z value, you can customize these parameters to your needs. But in my case, I use the total world size of the landscape, a height map, the resolution of the height map, and also the resolution of the landscape. Then, last but not least, it's a z scale of the landscape. This is important because it describes the quantization of the z values. The height map is sampled as integer, which will be one unit at a scale of one. So the default landscape scale of 100 means you can only sample in steps of 100 units. So if I open this landscape up, I can see the scale of 10 in the Z direction. Also, I have the resolution of 253, but the height map has a resolution of 256. I generated the landscape with a custom brush. This draws a material to a render target and thanks to a comment I found this custom noise function which I included into my own material. This brush also uses a brush manager which holds a render target. Currently you see it is empty um, and we have to update this brush once and then it can load the texture into our render target. Now you can see a small border and this is exactly the offset between the landscape resolution and the height map resolution. So it should be three pixels. Okay, so now let's see what this algorithm can do. We have two points and we want to connect them with a path. So if I run the refinement, we can see a path is generated for us. And I think this already looks pretty good. Um, but let's see if we can play a little bit with these parameters. Um, so we can increase the number of candidate points, then also lower the scaling and maybe choose another exponent. And this gives a different result. One thing I haven't talked about is this refinement steps per iteration. Um, so let me just enable this iterate current and set this to one. So this allows me to uh, evaluate each step. So if I run this now, I can only see one step. And if I do another one, it will add up. Um, so what this does is this point 
will be evaluated based on where this point was. But this point wasn't exactly here because from the previous iteration uh, it was over here. So for the second point uh, in this chain it will assume this point is here and then choose a candidate point uh, based on that. But you you see that this point has moved all the way over here. So this isn't really up to date anymore. And if you would just uh, do another subdivision step, then this would conflict a little bit with the actual point. So what I did is to give the option to have another refinement step before the next subdivision. So if I do this now, we can see that this point has also moved over here because this point has moved from here to here. And now this gives a whole new path. So let me see what the result here is. Yeah, this is totally a different path. And personally, I think this is this is better because it also avoids this hill here. But then this looks a lot cleaner. As a final step, I also added a PCG component to a path manager and this will add stairs. So if the algorithm couldn't find a good way to avoid steepness, this PCG component will add stairs so it will like deal with the very steep areas. And if we look into the graph here, I just sampled some points on the spline and protected them to the landscape. Then I have these two point filters, uh, which filter for the Y rotation. So uh, this first uh, filter filters for negative Y rotation and this for positive Y rotation. And I combined both of them um, and put them into this custom blueprint, which will reset the X and Y rotation and keep the Z rotation. Um, so let me just disable this, then you can see what I mean. Um, so this was the original rotation and you don't want stairs like this. Um, I w only want to keep the Z rotation of this uh, of the steps and then I have like nice stairs. Then of course I have a static mesh spawner and you can replace this cube with anything you like. So you can have nice steps. Thanks for watching, bye.